this is the same whether it's a full arch or a quadrant or whatever. You open your CAD cam icon and you select this, this button here and opens up this window. Then what you want to do is browse to where we've stored our CEREC file. So when you design a case in your CEREC machine, mm -hmm. when you go to your mill preview window, if you go up to the top toolbar, there's a button up there that says export case. When you export that case, you export what's called a .ssi file. There's going to be a few file types. There's a .cdt, there's a .rst, and then there's a .ssi. And if you go back to your desktop here, and you open up the XG3, the owner's resource I gave you, and you go to Quick Reference Guides, you can go to CEREC Integration, and it's going to walk you through those steps on how to get that. But it's actually very simple. Inside your CEREC machine, you design the crown, you go to Mill Preview, and you go up to the top and you hit File, Export Case, mm -hmm. and select .ssi. That .ssi file will look like one of these. And so what most people will do on their CEREC machine, there is a USB port right here. Mm -hmm. They plug their USB ports in. They put the SSI on their stick. They bring their stick back, stick it in the computer, and then you browse to that SSI. So here's the SSI. Say open. And then what it does is it allows you to visualize your CEREC quadrant, full arch, whatever you've done. You then hit next, and it's going to bring up both data sets. And you don't have to do these in any particular order, but what you want to do is you want to give it like points. So I'm going to start here. Even though this tooth has a metal in it, I'm still going to start on that buckle cusp. I'm going to double click on the center of that buckle cusp. I'm going to double click there. Then I can it doesn't even have to be exact. Like just close. Close. Okay. We're just giving it, the, the software itself does the correlation. We're just kind of telling it where to go. We're speeding up the process. Then I'm going to go here and double click. I'm going to go here and double click. If this was a full arch, I'd do two or three on this side and two or three on this side. For example, going back to your discussion about metal or bursting, I wouldn't put any dots here. I could put a dot here. I could put a dot here. I could put a dot here. But I wouldn't put any dots over this metal area. Mm -hmm. But if I had these two teeth and one or two teeth on this side and the rest were metal, that would still be fine. That would be enough. So, then you're going to hit next. Then what it's going to do is it's going to merge the two data sets. I have a question. Yes. Are the fit of the, the guides based on the scan of the, the 3D scan or, or the CEREC or the scan? CEREC scan. CEREC scan. Okay. That's what makes the metal not matter. Okay. If there's too much metal and we can't correlate, you know, a few good teeth, then it affects us. But the CEREC model has no bursting, has mm -hmm. no metal. So we actually design the guide off the CEREC scan. Okay. So that's that's the nice part. Right. That's the beauty. But like you in this in this case here, that um, CEREC scan was only like uh, the quadrant. Right. So what you would want is on this one, you'd want a full arch. Right. Or at least from this canine over. For at least canine. I'd go I'd at least canine over. Like the other canine, the opposite canine. Yeah, I'd go, yeah, the opposite. You want something on this arch. Mm -hmm. There's no reason why you couldn't go here to here, especially when you start doing it on stone, but you want at least mm -hmm. at least three quarters of the arch. Okay. Because it, it provides guide stability. Then the software lets you visualize the yellow lines and make sure that they're outlining the, the dentition correctly. If they're not, you hit back. And you could re, re put some new, you know, if this had a ton of metal, you might have to put a couple of different dots and move them around and make it line up. Then you're going to hit confirm. And then now you have your model in there. And that's really the extent of it. So from here, I could go to surgery. Opti guide, fill the stuff in, hit transfer and go. So I just have to fill in that information once, right? Yeah. And then it'll save, save it. Yep. Okay. Can you show me in this um, screen mm -hmm. here, three D screen, um, how you would present that to the patient as far as like uh, case presentation to make it make it look, you know. 
Yeah. Um, um, like it's what I would what I would typically do would from do a case presentation standpoint is I I start I start with building the value of the machine, and and in my opinion, what that looks like is talking the patient through their anatomy and saying something along the lines of, if you hid your implant plan and you hid your optical impression and you started with this and you would talk to Mrs. Smith about this is what a 2D radiograph looks like. And so when we look at doing this implant site, because maybe she, maybe you've brought up an implant before and she's not interested, or she's concerned about maybe someone had a bad experience with implants, or they got a sinus infection, or they, they're part of their jaw is numb. You can talk her through the deficiencies of a 2D radiograph, and walk her through and say, I know maybe we've talked about this before, but I want to show you how ideal this case is for an implant, or, or what the challenges are depending on the patient for an implant site. So. I'm gonna, and you can say I'm going to put my viewing window over this area where the implant would go and what I'm able to see is I'm able to see a cross-sectional slice and I'm able to see deeper into your anatomy which will allow me to completely visualize the floor of your sinus or the nerve, the alveolar nerve canal therefore being able to accurately and effectively plan an implant and determine whether or not you would need any additional surgery up front whether or not you would need additional restorative one of the things that we have found by doing a lot of polling is that patients don't want to go into surgery with any unknowns. They want to understand whether or not they're going to pay an extra $700 or not. They want to understand that the procedure is faster, it's minimally invasive, and they understand A to Z. So when you walk a patient through a case like this, and you say, now this is the plan we put together for you, and you turn the implant on, and you blow this window up, and you walk her through, and you can say, here's the outline of your sinus floor, and here's the outline of, of the rest of your bone. And the system that we use by doing guided surgery instead of doing freehand with 2D imaging is that implant is placed to exact precision. So when we go through, and many guys will have a sample of a guide, when we go through this, there is no variance. I'm unable to change the angulation. I'm unable to change the depth. So I can completely visualize your anatomy, understand where I need to go, and I'm able to do a soft tissue punch instead of cutting you open so it's a faster healing time, minimally invasive, no sutures. And then in addition to that, and I've seen guys go into depth about the downside of doing implantology without understanding the restorative component. It's not as big of a deal back here, but especially if you're in the anterior region, you can talk about the need to understand soft tissue posturing and aesthetics. And what you can do is you can say, now that I'm able to merge this with my optical impression, and I'm going to turn the restoration off, you can walk Mrs. Smith through the fact that you can now see the outline of her soft tissue. You're able to see the proposed restoration. So we're able to comprehensively understand and plan your entire implant and restoration in one software format, allowing me to do this procedure in many cases a two appointment, sometimes even a one appointment scenario, minimally invasive and very, very accurate. Where you can go beyond that if you start if you're really into an anterior area, um, you can actually if you go into your 3D imaging window and you right click and you say clip along active slice, I can actually remove the opposing arch and give her a little more information this way. You can also go into your radiology view and we talk about clipping along your active slice. I can do something like this and scroll away that bone. And if the implant was on the lower I could see the implant, the nerve, and everything, and give her a little more information that How'd way. How do you do that again? So if you go into your radiology view, mm -hmm. and you right-click, there's a couple choices. One is clip along active slice, and one is clip along volume region of interest. This mm -hmm. one you really don't ever mess with. But if you click clip along your active slice, mm -hmm. remember when I was showing you how to angle slices? Yeah. 
and when we click in here with that orange slice allows us to go mm -hmm. this way if I click in here that orange is my active slice right mm -hmm. just like thinking about angulation that's my active slice so when I scroll if you look at this when I scroll that slice so there's my orange slice when I scroll that slice in and out I'm clipping away the rest of the data oh, okay. I can also do this with it Okay. So you can vary effectively. This isn't as big of a deal up, up top as it is down below, but if I had a lower implant, I can very effectively mm -hmm. show her the cross-sectional slice mm -hmm. in color, and they respond better to this. Yeah. This is the screen that they interact with the most. And you can cut that open and say, here's your nerve, here's this, here's this. You can flip, up, you can flip it up like this and go to your axial view and take away... I can, I can turn that restoration off and you can show her how that implant's coming directly through the center of her tissue and then instead of having to lay a flap or cut your tissue open I can visualize with my technology that I, I, I'm going to be able to do a soft tissue punch so your healing is going to be much faster much more pain free and that all comes this is the window you want to interact with them the most on mm -hmm. and it's that right click clip along active slice Okay, that's that's your real powerful area there.